Hi, I'm Sylvia Rosenberg, and today I'm going to show you how to make a fondant gift bow for a cake topper. Okay, so here are the things that we're going to be using today. I I just found this at Michael's, so I thought it'd be fun to try it out. So that's the reason why we're doing a gift bow with ribbons today. Um, it's a ribbon cutter, and this says happy birthday, and it has some, some patterns there. I thought it'd be fun to use. I have um, cornstarch or powdered sugar, an X-Acto blade, a brush, some floral wire. This is 24. Ideally you want maybe a 22, but I didn't have that, so this will do. And um, I have my two color of fondants that I'm going to use today, yellow and orange. Uh, we will also need a pasta machine maker extruder, I'm not sure what it's called, but we need one of those. You actually don't need it, but it makes life a lot easier. To make the fondant more easier to work with and the, so that it dries faster, I'm going to use this um, Thai loose. And this is just what's readily available for me at the store. And I have this um, dab and hold. I'm also trying this thing out. It's supposed to be an edible adhesive. So we're going to see how it works. Should do its job. A little bowl. We're going to get started. I'm going to put some of this um, glue in the bowl and have it ready. I went ahead and I made some loops last night so that, um, actually two nights ago, so that they would be nice and dry. So this is what we're going to do, little loops. And then when they are dry, hopefully in a couple of days, hopefully you're working with enough time to let them dry, then we will assemble it. So. I'm just going to mix the fondant with some of that Thai loose. If you use fondant straight up, it won't harden as fast. So this, um, I think it adds a little flexibility too. But it makes it so that it dries much faster, which is good if you live in a very humid place. You can just get your rolling pin and get rolling. I am doing this the lazy way, but it works. You should probably roll it out a little bit first, but we'll just go ahead and do it. And I am going to, I start at zero and not break it. Okay. And I'm going to slowly bring it. I think a four is what I used last night. Let's see. We don't want it too thin, but we need it to be thin enough so that it dries fast because I'm going to use two layers of, of fondant for this ribbon. This is fun, huh? This is perfect. I, I did it at a number four. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're using a rolling pin, just make it thin enough that, um, that when you stack two of them, it won't be too thick. Okay? I'm actually going to get rid of this for a little bit. The patterned one. Not sure what it is, but it, one of these, um, it's like a piece of plastic or something to put over it. It makes it a lot easier because we can, it buys us time. If not, you have to work faster and maybe just do less ribbons at, this, at a time. You don't want to, you don't want to make too many of these at the same time because then they will dry out and crack not look pretty.
All right, so now we are going to add our texture. And um, I'm gonna do the happy birthday one. And um, here, if you have some paper towel, I have some cotton balls ready, but paper towel will do the job. Just you want something in the middle to hold to hold its shape while it's drying. Actually, this is going to be one of the bottom loops, so I am not going to add a wire yet. into a pointy tip. And since I have a bunch already made, then I just twist a little bit to make it look like realistic ribbon. I already have some made, so I don't want it to be much too much bigger or smaller. So I'm gonna just kind of measure it against that. And then we set it to dry. So there's the first one. Now we will do the same thing. And then, um, the reason why I'm using this, this silicone mat in the bottom is because when I work with this ribbon cutter on the actual table, my, my fondant was not thick enough, so your, my texture wasn't showing. So, um, hopefully yours is, if not make it a little thicker, or, or if you have something like this, it has a little give, so I can squeeze into it, and then the texture shows. But if, if you just make it your fondant a little thicker, then it should work. That is the only thing I don't like about this ribbon cutter. It seems to be made for much thicker fondant, and I like my fondant to be nice and thin. And then again, we're gonna compare it to one that I already made to keep the size consistent. All right, I put the ribbon in the middle, and now we will cut. You see what happens if I don't have the cotton in between, then it kind of just flops. And paper towel works better at times because if your fondant is a little bit wet, then the cotton sticks to it. And that's not nice. You don't want fussy fondant. Okay. There we go. And there, with a lot of patience, you just keep repeating this over and over until you have done a a lot. Um, I'm also, I thought it would look really fun to have some, not loops, but just pieces of ribbon. So like for example, right here, I have a little bit left over from that loop. I'm just gonna cut the tip off. And do the same thing with the, and I am making this slightly bigger than the loops so that they stick out a little bit. some some ribbon I, I do want to put some of this wire in between I'm gonna dab it with the glue and I'm gonna try to stick it in between the two pieces of fonda not too far and maybe just about an inch I'm going to put a little glue and then just twist the bottom and then I'm gonna maybe put some cotton there so it has some of movement. Okay, so now that I have showed you how to make these loops, we are ready to put this bow together. Um, two days ago, I made all of these loops. So by now, 
they are nice and crunchy and they will not bend when I work. I am working over this just, I feel like it's a little safer than the regular table. If it falls, it won't break. I will remove all my cotton and we will start with the inside or top of the bow. And uh, okay, those are already there. So you see this is going to be assembled like that at the end. All right, so I'll pick one. I am going to just slightly, I guess I'm not even, the wire I use this, it's a 24, so it gives pretty easily. So I'm just going to bend it a little bit and put them around, let's see, inconsistent shape, and put it around. I might want to start with the smaller ones. Pick the ones, just pick the ones that are a little smaller that will look nicer. I think I might be ready for that. And then, um, obviously you should have a prettier looking cake, but just for purposes of demonstrating what to do. So this is where your straw would go. This is where your straw would go and then you would just slide it in and not have to go through this messy process. Okay, um, strong. There. See, we did not even use the pliers, but they come in handy for this. See how pretty that's looking? And, and then, this part you wanna um, put a little royal icing on your fondant, or if you're using buttercream, then you don't even need royal icing, it just stick to it. And we are putting all the extra parts in. I didn't put wires on these, I thought it'd be easier, but I guess it wouldn't hurt if you do have some. And this is the way I make a cake bow gift bow. There. If the cake was prettier, it would look prettier, but isn't that pretty? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and share the videos and leave a comment if you have any questions. I will try to answer them. Thanks.